If you're not going out, Lee Max back. There's another chance to see Saturday's 1% Club later at 25 past 10. First on STV, Monday's late news. It's just gone 5 past 10. Almost 28 hours on strike and nurses say there could be more action. On the eve of crucial pay discussions, some unions claim unless the offer improves, walkouts will continue. Also tonight, police injured and hundreds of arrests in May Day protests in Paris. Trump touches down in Aberdeen, boasting of his Scottish roots. My mother was born in Scotland. She loved Scotland, was a great admirer of the Queen, and I got to know the Queen so well. And they may have lost their match, but Arsenal's women's game is still a record breaker. Back of the Euros, the back of the women's team doing so well, and of course the men are on the up as well, so I think it's a real feel-good factor. Yeah. ITV News with Kylie Pentelow. Good evening. At midnight tonight, nurses in England will bring to an end strike action that they've described as their biggest yet. For the first time, critical services like A&E and chemotherapy have been disrupted. The Royal College of Nursing has warned that they're planning future walkouts and urged the government to get round the table immediately. But the government says the action is premature, as there's a meeting with wider unions tomorrow. Harry Horton reports. Across England today, nurses have once again walked off the front line and onto the picket line. Some health unions have accepted the government's latest pay offer, but those still striking say poor paying conditions mean they have to keep up their fight. They just can't keep going on giving their goodwill anymore because they don't have any left, anything left to give. Do you think there's enough determination to keep striking until you get this better pay deal? I think so, yeah. Every single day that I go to work, I worry about patient safety and I worry that people are not in, a, in an environment where we can look after them properly. Members of the Royal College of Nursing walked out last night and will strike until midnight tonight. Nurses who work in intensive care, A&E and cancer care will be among those striking, but some exemptions are in place for critical care. Unite members at some ambulance services are also striking today and tomorrow. <laughs> Ministers say today's strikes will be incredibly disruptive and will do little to help the 7 million NHS patients waiting for treatment. Ron Fluitz has a lung condition and has been waiting almost two years for a transplant. Every day I'll wake up, we think we're going to get the phone call. So today, are we going to get that phone call? I just don't know. You're in limbo. You don't know what your life holds. And it is in the hands of the, obviously, the donors and the doctors and nurses. Union leaders say they're prepared to strike until the end of the year. And that's really unfortunate that we may have to do that and push these people onto picket lines to them. But we can actually draw them to a close very quickly if the Secretary of State and this government does the decent thing for nursing staff and pays them a decent wage. Tomorrow, unions, employers and the government will discuss the latest pay offer, but some in the NHS say unless the offer improves, disruption will continue. And Harry is here for more on this. Um, so that big meeting tomorrow then about pay for health workers. What are we expecting? Well, we're expecting a majority of unions to accept that pay offer from government. Uh, and if that happens, the government will be able to implement it, which will affect most NHS staff on these contracts. Uh, and it's a 5% uh, pay increase uh, and a one-off payment for last year. Now, this, this doesn't mean that other strikes won't go ahead. And in fact, tonight, the RCN General Secretary, Pat Cullen, has been really clear. She said that other unions accepting this deal doesn't alter the dispute that her union is having with the government. But if you look at the pictures of picket lines today, and I visited a few, they did appear to be smaller than picket lines we saw earlier this year. And I think what the government is hoping is that if they can implement this latest pay deal, some nurses will start to see that extra money in their pay packets. And they hope that will dampen enthusiasm for further strikes going forward. OK, Harry, thank you. 
Almost 2,200 people, British nationals and Sudanese doctors working in the NHS, have now been evacuated from Sudan on military planes. As fighting continues despite a truce, Britons in the country were told to travel to Port Sudan, where two additional flights were arranged today. The UN has warned that the country is at a humanitarian breaking point. And First Republic has become the third major American bank to collapse this year. JP Morgan have taken over the bank following a deal brokered by the regulators. Last week, First Republic admitted that customers had withdrawn nearly £80 billion of deposits in March. In France, over 100 police officers have been injured during May Day protests as unions continue to demonstrate against new laws to raise the pension age. French officials say 291 people were arrested in clashes in Paris, Lyon and Nantes. Ian Woods has more. May Day, May Day. A traditional day to campaign for workers' rights, but that shouldn't involve use of petrol bombs to attack police. A minority of French protesters in recent weeks have been intent on provoking violence. And the police have responded with force. But those who've led the street demonstrations in Paris and elsewhere argue that they do have public support to resist pension reforms. Neither a court ruling approving the measure, public fatigue, nor deploying water cannon have doused anger over the plan to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64. President Emmanuel Macron argues the country can't afford not to, but he pushed the law through without a parliamentary vote, inflaming opposition further. Into this bitter dispute stepped a British teachers' union leader, claiming there was a French lesson for everyone. The French unions here today, I think they're an inspiration to working people across Europe, that you don't back down, that we have to fight for social change, we have to stop the, the gradual erosion of, of, of the social wage, which is what's going on across Europe. The retirement age in Britain is already four years older than in France and rising, and yet it didn't provoke the depth of anger seen here. The protests have drawn hundreds of thousands of people and have been going on for months. Neither they nor the president seem willing to back down. Ian Woods, ITV News. Here, police have recovered a body after searching for a teenager who went missing while playing in a river with friends. A group of five teenagers were in the River Thames near Lechlade on Thames in Gloucestershire on Sunday night when one failed to resurface. Police were called at around 10 p.m. and the sad discovery was made after extensive searches today. The death is not being treated as suspicious. A man who was stabbed to death during a serious altercation near a nightclub in Cornwall has been named. Michael Allen was killed and seven other people suffered stab wounds in an attack close to the Eclipse nightclub in Bodmin on Sunday. His family said he was a much-loved son. A 24-year-old man has been arrested. Donald Trump touched down in Scotland this morning, saying it was great to be home. The former president, whose mother is from the Isle of Lewis, is visiting his golf resorts in Scotland and Ireland. But it comes as Trump faces ongoing court action in the United States, as Peter Smith now reports. The 45th president of the United States touched down in Scotland this morning with an entourage of family and friends. Greeted by the sound of bagpipes, a welcome change for Donald Trump from the noise of litigation now mounting against him on the other side of the Atlantic. Last month, he pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts, and this is the first time he has left the US since appearing in court. President Trump, are you here to escape your troubles at home? Great to be home, he says here, due to his Scottish mother and owning two Scottish golf courses. But as the red carpet was rolled up and his motorcade rolled out, it is no secret this is a man who craves the power of the presidency and badly wants to call the White House home once again, if he is allowed to run. The last time Donald Trump was in the UK in 2019, he was still US president. He now lands here in the northeast of Scotland as the only US president in history to be facing criminal charges. Today his lawyers filed for a mistrial in one of his pending court cases. 
in a civil action in which he is accused of rape and defamation, an 18-page letter has accused the judge of being biased against Donald Trump. That request for a mistrial was swiftly denied. President Trump has now arrived at his many estate golf links. His Scottish courses lost almost four and a half million pounds in year 2021. But today, in footage from his own media team, he announced work will begin on a new course here, named after his mother. She loved Scotland, was a great admirer of the Queen, and I got to know the Queen so well. But President Trump will not be staying for the King's coronation. He hasn't been invited. Instead, he's leaving for Ireland, where he also owns a golf course. Peter Smith, ITV News, Aberdeenshire. It's been a landmark day for women's football. 60,000 fans packed out Arsenal's Emirates Stadium in London earlier this evening for their Champions League semi-final clash against German team Wolfsburg. Now, the match may not have gone the gunners' way, but it was still a moment to celebrate. Chris Scudder was watching. Another landmark day for women's football, the highest ever crowd for a club match in England. A 60,000 full house, only Barcelona have ever beaten that anywhere in the world. Since we've arrived in January, there, it feels like there's a buzz, there's an energy around women's football. On the back of the Euros, the back of the women's team doing so well, and of course the men are on the up as well, so I think it's a real feel-good factor. To have an eight-year-old who's into football, has been following a bit of the men's game, to see the women doing so well, we're just bursting with excitement. The electric atmosphere brought back memories of the Lionesses' success in the Euros. And for a while it looked like being a night of celebration. Stina Blackstenius scoring the night's first goal. Oh, yes, she can! Giving Arsenal a 3-2 aggregate lead. Twice champions, Wolfsburg looked rattled until this, an equaliser from Jill Ruud. Wolfsburg a level! Arsenal came out firing for the second half and thought they'd gone back in front only for VAR to disallow the goal. It proved costly. The veteran German great Alexandra Pop made it 2-1 Wolfsburg. The returning Pop! Only for the Gunners to come firing back and set the stadium alight with Jen Beatty making the tie all square again. It went to extra time and Arsenal came this close to winning it. But in a match of fine margins, a defensive mistake was to prove costly and the Germans did what they so often have in the men's game with a late winning goal. Disappointment for Arsenal, but on a night when the women's game took another giant leap forward. Chris Scudder, ITV News. And finally for this evening, Anton Deck, Lionel Richie and the magician Dynamo. Not the lineup of a new entertainment show, but some of the guests who will be at the King's coronation on Saturday. They'll join the congregation of over 2,000 people, including some less well-known names who are chosen for their connections to the Prince's Trust. Vincent McAvinney has been taking a look at the guest list. At Westminster Abbey, preparations are well underway for Saturday's coronation. And now we know some of the 2,200 attendees who will witness King Charles III's crowning. As well as 100 heads of state, representatives from the Prince's Trust and the Prince's Foundation are also on the list, including Anton Deck, repair shop presenter Jay Blades, British Vogue editor Edward Enninfil, the magician Dynamo who received support and funding from the Trust when starting out, and Lionel Richie who will also be performing at Sunday's concert. But as well as the famous faces, community and charity champions like Nicole Christie will also be in attendance. The 27-year-old is a graduate of the Prince's Foundation's Modern Artisan Training Programme. She's built a sustainable fashion business and was named Scottish Fashion Designer of the Year. So how did it feel when you found out that you'd be going to the coronation? It's a small business in Glasgow to then have the honour to be invited down um, for the coronation. Um, it's such a huge honour. I mean, it's just things that you just don't imagine will ever happen. I think I'm going to be very overwhelmed. It's, I think it's going to be quite hard not to get emotional. Um, I'll be wearing waterproof mascara that day. We've also found out what His Majesty will be wearing when he's crowned by the Archbishop of Canterbury. The King will reuse historic items of clothing from the Royal Collection, worn previously by monarchs King George IV, V and VI and Queen Elizabeth II at their own coronations. Now less than five days away, an occasion King Charles has waited 74 years for, 
will be one which very much reflects the journey of his life before the throne. Vincent McAvinney, ITV News. Of course, there'll be lots more ahead of the coronation and a special programme on the big day itself right here on ITV. But that's it from me, from all of us here. Enjoy the evening. Bye-bye. The warm weather continues, so why not squeeze the most out of the